Hello and welcome to Book Week Scotland's role-playing game, The Bookshop. Uh, this has been created as a downloadable game that you can play yourselves by visiting the Scottish Bookshop Trust website, and I'm told there's a link below. Uh, for those who are unsure, a role-playing game is a shared story. Uh, the environments, locations and unfolding events are described by the bibliophile, that's me, and that's a fancy word for games master or dungeon master for this game. Um, then the story can't work without characters. We have our players and they will be the characters who decide what's going to happen and how they will act. The idea is that using idioms or turns of phrases, you'll describe a character who has flaws and skills. And also we can talk about luck, like you might have uh, something, you're an unlucky person or a lucky person to balance out any of your other skills. So we'll talk about that a bit and then we'll write your characters down. They can be anything. So your characters are about to go into Treasure Island, but they could be anything. They could be a robot, they could be a Martian, they could be an elf. The only problem with that is that if other characters discover you, they might be somewhat surprised and alarmed. So it's entirely up to you. We'll see how it goes. I thought that my character, I had an idea that my character um, is uh, Jim Blunt. Um, and the reason for that is I thought like Jim could be a bit of a blunt instrument. Um, he's uh, a grave digger um, who's nice. had a hard life um, of, of decades plus of um, digging graves um, just surrounded um, by gloom. Um, and Jim is, um, is, I guess his strengths are that he's uh, kind of, you know, quite decisive and forthright in his own opinions. Um, hence the blunt instrument. He, he tends to just do things and not really kind of not reflect um, or, or navel gaze. Um, but the so he can be decisive. But the other side is that he's uh, has virtually no people skills. Um, can't cooperate well with others, um, and that tends to to let him down and and lead him to. Uh, um, face situations on his own where sometimes people might might have helped him out. Um, he has had a hard life, but underneath, buried underneath um, layers of um, bitterness uh, um, from years of um, loneliness and ill treatment, there is a, a good heart, but it's it's hard to find. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, what about luck? Do we think he's a lucky guy, Jim? Um... No, no, but he has a, a sort of part in that. I mean, he, he has what, what he perceives as bad luck, but he doesn't see the role that he plays in bringing about his own misfortune. Okay. Brilliant. So that is character creation. You write your character onto these book plates. You fold them up and the bookshop keeper puts them into the page where they arrive at Treasure Island in the book. What I tend to do is have a list of possibilities and locations that the players may or may not visit. It's very unlikely your players will do exactly what you want. And if you force their hand into doing it, it doesn't feel like a role playing game. It feels like a story that's being told to the players rather than them having any say or, or, or influence. So it's always good to get a balance. Sometimes you have to push them in a certain direction. Um, if, to say, uh, quite early on, they're rowing to the island and the sea's quite enticing and one of the characters was thinking about having a swim. To discourage that, you just have to throw something in, like there are sharks in the water, to put them off and get them onto dry land. Uh, it's good to have a checklist. And if you're running this to a time, uh, using a time is obviously quite useful. Uh, have the beats written down so you know, oh, that's going to take... 15 minutes maybe sometimes it'll take more sometimes it'll take less it usually evens out so you, if you if you're going for a very specific time slot usually about an hour and a half for a one shot like this it's good to keep an eye on the clock when you create a game and you've got some favorite scenes in it you have to decide whether if the players avoid that 
by sneaking around it or anything, whether it's essential that they visit it. So there were a number of encounters they didn't have or could have had. Uh, none of them were absolutely essential. If it is an essential one, you'll have to guide them to it to get whatever it is they need to succeed. Uh, but it's their, their adventure and you want them to enjoy it. So if they feel they've been forced into a situation, it takes away a little edge. Sometimes that has to happen. Obviously, like in any book, you have um, events that are required and you just put them in so that they can't be avoided. With character creation, as uh, we did it as part of the story here, you don't have to do that. You can have your players um, read the first part of the rules, which explains character creation, and they can come to you with their characters already rolled up. It's, uh, it saves time and gives you a bit more time to play, uh, but it's quite a nice way, and it's things like video games use it a lot, that uh, to get yourself into the mood of the game, you create your character as part of that event. Um, if we look at something like Fallout or Skyrim, you get a cut scene and then someone says, well, who do you think you are? And then you get to choose your statistics. So it's a similar, similar system for this, just to get people into it, especially if they're new to role playing. It kind of helps if you're struggling with creating a character because you haven't done it, making that part of the, of the game just eases people in, I find. You use the spyglass and in doing so, spot the dragon flying across the island. It heads for another hill further up to the north and you see that there's a cave there and the dragon goes into the cave. What would you like to do next? Guys, when I go to the fort, get some, get some uh, weapons and then go for the dragon. Oh, wait a second, Jack. Wait a second, though. Like th those pirates are keeping themselves busy. Uh, they're they're fighting amongst themselves. They'll be they'll be ages. We don't need to worry about them. I say we I say we focus all our attention on the dragon, and just see monitor its behavioural patterns. See how often it comes back between each cave, and then we go straight for the treasure and nick it from under the pirates' noses. I'm with Jim. I think that's a good idea. I said, I'm not interested in getting dragon blood on this dress. I would just like the treasure, please. I'm not interested in killing it. Sure. Well, our share of the treasure, I should say. I'm sorry, that was a, a slip. I mean, our share. I see you just slow us down. So you just you can just stay on the hill. <laughs> I'll dig you um, a, a hiding pit. I am absolutely not staying on this hill. And, you know, you guys taking all the treasure for yourselves. I'm coming with you. I just want to meet a dragon. 